can come together and to be exhorted by the word of God. And this morning my lesson is the call of the master and the uh, scholars of the Bible. This is how they call this verse. They say, come to me. It's Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And when we read these verses, then one of the things we find we read is, is that it implies something to do. Now, many people would uh, say you only need to believe. A belief is a brain thought or a function of the brain. But when you come, then it's action. And so God, when he says, come to me, it's an invitation to each one of us. That means if I need to say, come, then I expect all of you to stand up and come my way. It is something which your mind tells you to do. It is because of something that you would come forward. So when Jesus, the call of the master says, come, come to me all who labor. It is clear that God will not force us to serve him. But nevertheless, we see great encouragement to do so. The second part is says, it implies something to take. And that is when we read, take my yoke upon you. And so Jesus, the emphasis here then is service. Yoke is what is placed on the oxen so they can draw the wagon. Yoke is even in the time of, of, of um, punishment, then they will put a yoke on your shoulders and tie your hands to it, and we know you cannot do anything. But here, this is, Jesus implies service. When we come to him, then he's even inviting us to be of service to him. This morning we may ask ourselves, how are our service towards God? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Labor, a form of work, a form of duty. And when when we have a yoke on us, we find that it is required of us not just to carry, but also to feel the burden. Sometimes we go to the shop and we need to carry our baggage. And if it's a cold day, we will find even our fingers will tell us you have carried a heavy burden. The, anything that is heavy will leave its mark. And so Jesus wants us to realize when he calls us to do something, we need to take up this yoke upon our shoulders and we need to walk with him. It also implies that we must leave something behind. Come to me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. So it's an invitation also to us to leave something behind. And usually 
It's the burden of sin. In Philippians 3 and 13, Paul writes this. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it on my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. And that was Mo, uh, uh, Paul's Moses of Arandi, if one. This is what he was doing. He knew where he came from. But he went a different direction after meeting with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, brothers, I forget the past. You cannot walk with that burden. Therefore, Christ has taken it upon himself. It led him to the cross of Calvary. I will carry your burdens. And so, this is what Paul then encourages us. Forget the things that are past. Straining, persevere for the remaining days of your life so that you can be a servant of service to our Heavenly Father. In 1 John 2, see 1 John 2, verses 15, it says, Don't love the world and what it offers. Those who love the world don't have the Father's love in them. Not everything that the world offers, physical gratification, greed, and extravagant lifestyles, comes from the Father. No, it comes from the world. And the world and its evil desires are passing away. But the person who does what God wants lives forever. So here in 1 John, we have this beautiful encouragement. We need to make a decision. There's the world and there's the love for God. Don't love the world and what it offers. It is burdensome. Those who love the world don't have the Father's love in them. Where must he take his place? When your life is filled with worldly things, and then it is gi given here, not everything that the world, what is what the world offers? Physical gratification. It's only, maybe I can build my stronger muscles. Maybe it can cause me to climb out a mountain. But you can climb out Mount Everest. And even if you reach the top, it does not forgive your sins. You've put in so much energy. But it does not forgive. That is physical gratification. Greed. Oh, this is something which is a curse in our country. Greed. Everybody just wants. And if we don't get, we will destroy till we receive what we want. And extravagant lifestyles. You know, there was only Woolworths when I grew up. There was Oak Bazaar and Woolworths. Now, there is so many, many boutiques. You can go into any mall and you'll find they all lined up there, displaying extravagant. Sometimes you must look at the name first before you enter, because the name will tell you if you can afford it. But extravagant lifestyles. Yes, I'm not saying you should not wear beautiful clothes and beautiful shoes. I'm not saying that. But are you living for that only? When your salary is in the bank, is the first thing you do is, I need a new pair of shoes. There's 10 pairs already in the cupboard. 
Oh, I need a jacket. Oh, I saw somebody. What a beautiful uh, dress or skirt or jacket. And I also want it. If you've got clothing, you have enough. If you've got a roof over your head, you've got enough. If you've got a car, it's good. It can bring you to church. But do not... You know that we at the college, we had a special training that we needed to know how to work with money. Because they say a preacher that does not know how to use his money wisely will not be fit for the kingdom. So we were given special training on how to do or work with your money so that Maybe the church would say, no, we're not going to give so much money anymore to the church. No, because the preacher's driving a new car every year. And though he's always on a holiday, Turkey or America or Australia, no, he's getting too much money. Look, he's just bought another house and so on. This is material gratification. But we had to learn, remember, you are the leader of people. There's poor in the congregation and there is well off in the congregation. Don't you stand out like a sore thumb. If there's poor in the church, you become like those poor ones. So it's wise to know that. I know I, when I was still younger and was still preaching in Grassy Park, and uh, I said, I still made this example. If the church was say, you know, that suit that that preacher is wearing, he's got it for the last 10 years already. If you say that your preacher has got a suit for 10 years already, then he's telling you, you need to go and buy that cheap preacher a suit. You can't see him carrying on like that. So it's just a thought which at that time which I said, that, um, and that's how I viewed it. Romans 6 and verse 7, 16 and 17 says, Do you not know that if you present yourself to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to death? To righteousness. But thanks be to God that you who once were slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to a standard of teaching to which you were committed. So the Apostle Paul is saying, You were obedient to a master and a sinful master. When that craving is within you, and it tells you, you need this, you need that, I can't live without this. Now he's using that and he's saying, it is sin. Because you become a slave to sin. But now he's saying, but we are thankful to God that you have been obedient to a standard of doctrine or a standard of teaching to which you were committed. I'm thankful. Here is young children sitting here, and as I see them, my prayer is always that they will not be caught up in the world and its material gratification, but as they long to be in Sunday school and even in the youth, we was Friday night here with the youth, and it's lovely to see the exuberance of the young people. And my heart goes out and I pray, please, Lord, let they not go astray. Let the church always be there as the light to guide them. Because if we don't do it, then they fit. They will go to the world and the gratification of the world. But Paul is saying, I'm thankful to God that you once was lost, but now you are found. 
And you've been obedient to a form of teaching. And thank you for the Lord that he blesses us that way. So we need to leave behind sin. We need to leave behind. Colossians 3, verses 1 and 2 say, Since you were brought back to life with Christ, focus on the things that are above. Where Christ holds the honored position, the one next to God, the Father on the heavenly throne. So we have brought, we were brought back to life with Christ. And we had the, the fruit of the vine. It symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ that flowed for the remission of sins. And that brings us from a dead position to a life in Christ. He says, where Christ holds the honored position, the one next to God, the Father on the heavenly throne. Keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. So we need to leave this implied when he says, come to me, all who are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He wants us to leave that which is of no benefit to us. We need to leave that behind. Keep your mind on things above, not on worldly things. It says also, Colossians 3, verse, from verses 5 and 6, Therefore put to death Whatever is worldly in you, your sexual sin, perversion, passion, lust, and greed, which is the same thing as worshipping wealth. It is because of these sins that God's anger come on those who refuse to obey him. As I read this, I'm thinking of the Bible study we had this morning. Because that is the condition which Israel found itself in. That they oppress the poor and they are nonchalant to them. They even sell them off. But they've got houses, winter houses. They've got summer houses. They've got ivory clad houses. They live on nice beds. That's why God says, even the bed will be pulled out from under you. God is not to be mocked. He cares for us. And so when he says, come to me, all of you who are heavy laden, I will give you. So it implies something to do. It implies something to take, take my yoke upon you. It implies something to leave. We need to leave our sinful, greedy, and material gratification life we need to leave that it implies something to learn it says here and learn of me for I am gentle and I am lowly some would say meekness and gentle and humble it's the two words some version would say that and that is the example that Jesus throughout his life and his ministry on earth demonstrated that he was this gentle person. He was this lowly of heart. And the point where he most stressed it, when he was wrongfully accused, when they brought him before the Sanhedrin, when they brought him before the high priest, when they brought him before Pilate, he stood there. And when he did speak, it was of truth that he spoke. He was, even Isaiah chapter 53 would tell us, when it says there, the suffering Savior, he did not open his mouth. He could say at one time, I can call now on 10,000 of angels to release me, or my followers would have fought for me, but now I'm standing on my own, he tells Pilate. This is the way 
that Jesus had to go. We have to learn from him, and it shows that Christ set that example that we also don't seek your own. Rather, somebody smack you on the cheek, turn the other cheek also. Somebody ask you your coat, and you give the undercoat also. If you ask you to walk one mile, then you walk two miles with him. That is the example which Jesus said. It implies rest for the souls. As Jesus said, I will give you rest and also, and you will find rest for your souls. If you do all this which the Lord has asked of you to do, he will give you rest. And I had this verse this morning, but I need to read it again now. Jeremiah 6, 16. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask which path are the old, reliable path. Ask which way leads to blessings. Live that way and find resting place for yourselves. You must ask. You must come. You must take up your yoke. You must learn of God. And you will find that the resting place is prepared for you. And who wouldn't want to rest in the arms of Jesus? Who of us wouldn't like? It said here that Jesus is standing at the honorable position next to his father. And I can just see us standing next to Jesus also in an honorable place. This is what this verse implies to us. That we need to come. We need to <coughs> labor, uh, all who labor and are heavy laden. If you have burdens this morning and you want to make it lighter, Jesus is prepared to carry it with you. I will give you rest. Rest from sin. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find the rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know, uh, almost a thought that comes to me, a yoke can be heavy, but Jesus would take that heavy load from you and give you an aluminium yoke. It is much lighter. It can still do the work, but it doesn't take so much energy out of you. This is what the world can do. They can have metal that is heavy, and they can have metal that is light. If the world can do that, how much more our Heavenly Father take upon Him all our trials and tribulations, all our sins, and gives us a free passage to heaven and he's walking day by day with us and Revelation 14 13 says then I heard a voice from heaven saying write this happy are those who from now on die in the service of the Lord yes indeed answers the spirit they will enjoy rest from their hard work because the results of their service go with them. That is when we come to the end of our journey. Our works do follow us. And God gives us that so much needed rest in the arms of Jesus. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us not grow weary. Let us not think everything is burdensome when it comes to the Lord. Let us say, I am saved. I am free. I am free indeed. He says, come unto me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, I pray that we will come to you in this manner, and that we will realize that we are needful of you every day. But most blessed is that we will find rest in your arms. In Jesus' name, amen.